I just wanted to ask you first of all, you know, when you, you obviously you're, you're very uh, involved in the mobile industry mm -hmm. and you, you have a great understanding of it, but not everybody does. Mm -hmm. So when you were maybe speaking to maybe someone like your mom or mm -hmm. someone you used to be at college with who's not involved in that kind of industry mm -hmm. at all, and they say to you, well, what do you mean by everything mobile? What do mm -hmm. you mean you're involved in mobile? How would you explain mobile to them? Mm, that's a very good question. So I think what we're all seeing is uh, just the phenomenal growth in mobile devices. I mean, it's impossible to escape them now. Everybody has one. Um, people have used mobile phones to connect and speak to each other and text message for, for many, many years now, but the devices are getting more and more sophisticated. Yeah. And what that really means is that people can do more and more with them. And it's not just early adopters or teens or the younger generation, it's everybody. Um, I gave an iPad to my mom and to my dad at Christmas and now they are using it in ways which I never would have imagined them doing it. Um, so I think it's, it really comes down to the fact that the devices are becoming more and more powerful. There's more and more things you can do with it and people are just embracing that. How do you imagine the saturation rate is going to be for, for mobile? I mean, at the moment in the Qatar, for example, we're looking mm -hmm. at about 1.142%. Mm. So that's kind of one and a half per mm. population. But I mean, if, if this spreads in the way that that's being suggested, yep. how can you see the saturation rate going to be? I mean, I think Qatar is a, a really interesting example and almost unique in terms of mobile penetration and, and smartphone penetration. Um, if you look at other markets around the world, so certainly uh, Western European markets or US markets, where you're now approaching 30, 40, 50 percent penetration of smartphones as devices, that's really a kind of a big tipping point. Um, I think the Middle Eastern market's really, really interesting. There's lots of uh, very interesting dynamics going on here in terms of how people are using their devices. Um, and I think actually for the Middle Eastern region, mobile is going to have a more profound impact than, than PC web has over the last 10 years. That would be very interesting to mm. see. Um, you've got a lot of experience about work, with working in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. You were um, with Google in the Middle East mm. and Yahoo Europe as well. Mm. I'd be interested to know your thoughts on what are the obstacles standing in the way of, it, of, of kind of um, growth in the Middle East region? Mm. Because as you say, it is quite unique if you compare it to, to places like Europe. I mean, mm. what are our obstacles in, um, in, in making um, mobile more commercial mm. and uh, more popular, if you will, in this, yep. in this region? Okay. Um, I think there's a couple of things. I think one is uh, people often overlook that the region is very complex. Um, so people tend to, from the outside, treat the region as one homogenous uh, uh, region, but of course it's not. It's a series of very, very complex and distinct uh, individual countries, um, which have all got potential in their own way. Um, so I think understanding that's really, really important. And, and any business which has been successful here in the digital space has recognized that how you go to market in, in the UAE or in, or in Saudi is very different to how you go to market in, in Lebanon or Jordan. Um, so I think that's very important. Um, I think the second thing, the, the biggest challenge we have when we talk about digital in this region is um, there's a long history of, of online not living up to the promise that everybody expected it to have. Um, so one of the most common things I hear when I'm, I'm in the Middle East is, oh, you know, why should we really focus on mobile? You know, internet wasn't that successful. Um, and if you look at some of the common measures you use to assess success with the internet in other countries around the world, you know, what's the advertising spend, what's the penetration, um, and things like that, um, you know, you can argue that in some countries in the Middle East it hasn't been that successful. Um, so I think, you know, getting over that, that state of uh, almost apathy, if you like, is really, really important. The, the good news about this region is, is that um, there's a very interesting young entrepreneurial sector booming around mobile. Um, a lot of the uh, cost and complexity around building websites and launching websites doesn't exist now on mobile devices. So in some hotspots across the whole region, uh, young entrepreneurs are building fantastic mobile experiences, applications, which are really, really transforming the region and, and really kind of addressing some of the problems that happened with, with PC web in the last 10 years. Very good. And so in terms of, say, the next 12 months in this mm. particular region, specifically around Qatar and, mm. and our neighboring areas, you know, how do you see the mobile market is going to develop? What's um, next? Certainly growth, growth, growth. Um, you know, the data within our business shows that people are using their mobile devices um, in this country and other uh, areas across the region in you know, more and more intense ways. So, you know, that's undeniable. Mm. Um, I think innovation is really, really key as well. Uh, so mobile devices and the application environments you can build in allow entrepreneurs and established companies to be very, very innovative. Um, so you're going to see a lot more innovation as well. Um, so this region is, is, is similar to many other regions around the world in terms of those two dynamics. 
Um, I think the thing that's really interesting in the Middle East though as well is um, with mobile devices now there's potential for the region to start building really, really local content and local experiences and that hasn't always been the case on PC web. Um, so you know we're very excited about that and, and of course the way our business works we actually um, help entrepreneurs and help developers uh, do that. So um, you know huge, huge potential going forward. Absolutely, huge interest in, in that kind yeah. of technology as exactly. well. So there's a lot of energy coming into it. Um, you're also on the board of the Mobile Entertainment Forum, mm. the MEF. Mm. I just wanted you to tell me a little bit about what that does and why it's important. Yeah, so the, the MEF is a, a trade body which is um, very effective at bringing together people who are focused on the mobile entertainment space um, to really work through a lot of the complex issues which uh, exist in this market, um, you know, around regulation, around monetization, around privacy, um, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, MEF have been pretty active in, in focusing on the Middle East. Um, they have a representative office uh, here in Qatar um, and have been working with entrepreneurs and large companies for, I think, almost a year now um, to really help you know, expand what's happening on mobile and mobile entertainment across the region. All right, fantastic. That sounds great. Lastly, finally, mm -hmm. what's your favorite app? My favorite app, oh, it's a very, very hard question to answer. Um, I think probably right now, I'm st my favorite app is still Foursquare. I've been a long time Foursquare user. Um, I think it's a great business. I think it's really interesting. It, it really sits at the intersection between uh, online and offline, uh, mobile and web. Um, a fantastic team and also as well um, I'm lucky enough to travel a lot so uh, Foursquare is kind of like my library of where I've been and, and what I enjoy doing so has been my favorite for a long time and, and, is, and, and is currently as well. Sounds great, great stuff. Thank you so much. For Thank you.